Please welcome comedian Tig Notaro and Time Editor-at-Large, Belinda Luscombe. Many years ago, after a year, Tig, in which you survived a rare infection, you broke up with your girlfriend, you lost your mother unexpectedly, you opened a comedy set by standing up on stage and saying the words, and I may not get this quite right, but is everyone having a good time? I have cancer. And so I think the question that everybody in this room wants to know about that moment is, um, what designer were you wearing when you did that? <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was my Bill Clinton question. <laughs> That's all right. I, get, I do get asked that all the time. Um, I, I, uh, I, I wear hand-me-downs, so. An honorable tradition. Yeah, thank you. Um, invasive bilateral breast cancer is not normally something people will joke about. And I wonder if you could explain how the humor helped you deal with it. Well, I was, it was um, the final blow. It was a four month period of time um, after I had had, I had had pneumonia, C. diff, which was the intestinal disease. And my mother had an accident and died and the breakup. And, and I just, I kept thinking that maybe I was cursed. I truly, even though I don't think in those terms, I, um, I started to wonder maybe that was something that was real. And then when I went in for um, my appointment, and was diagnosed with uh, invasive cancer. I just, <laughs> I was, I was truly. It took my breath away in 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 horror and in like, oh my god, this is hilarious. Um, <laughs> of course, it wasn't hilarious, but I just, I mean, you know, something has to break the tension. And um, and uh, I mean, I was certainly on a. On a roller coaster of emotions for quite a while, with everything that had happened, but humor was was really a helpful tool to have, which I think I got from my my mother and my my family, and my upbringing, and so I was I I, I I always have felt lucky to have that. And the reaction of the crowd, it's not it's not exactly a kind of uh, you know standard opening joke. No, it's not. Uh, and nor was it a joke. Um, I was taking a shower before that show, and I kept thinking, how am I going to open this performance if I really want to talk about everything that I had been going through? And it crossed my mind to walk out on stage and say, hello, good evening, I have cancer. And it made me laugh so hard in the shower that I thought, I bet it'll work when I go on stage live. And, and it did. The audience broke into laughter, and it was, it was, it was so many different kinds of laughter. It was very, um, like belly laughter, and then nervous laughter, and then there were also people in the audience like, what, what, <laughs> what's happening? So, it was, it was, it was all over the place. Uh, further to that, you had a, a double mastectomy. I did. And then sometimes, including on your HBO special, you took your shirt off during sets. Why did you do that? Well, um, after I had had a double mastectomy, I didn't have reconstructive surgery because my, my chest, if you must know, um, <laughs> was not, <laughs> it wasn't the biggest thing that you could ever see. And um, to say the least, and, and it felt odd to me to try and recreate that. Um, <laughs> so, and then I, there were moments where I thought, maybe I'll go really big. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I thought I'd just go with scars, and, which is what I did. I just have scars across my chest. And I also thought that that was funny to go on stage and take my shirt off and just tell jokes that have nothing to do with cancer or anything and just talk about air travel 
And, um, and everybody, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, you shouldn't do that. You're going to lose the audience. They're going to be only focused on your scars. And I thought, eh, I feel like I can pull this off because to me, I, the scars, I, I used to um, struggle with them, but then I realized one day that they just represented my body healing and I started to feel empowered by it. And, um, and, I, and I also just thought that if I'm going to make any sort of statement, as a comedian, I should try and add humor to it. And to me, the funny part was not acknowledging it. And, um, and I was right. The audience, men, women, cancer survivors, non-cancer survivors, people were always like, I truly got over it so quickly. And it, and it, um, and it's really just an issue about the human body and just um, accepting yourself as is. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. I think you did. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're not the first person to not answer my question. <laughs> okay. You're probably not even the first person on stage today okay. to not answer the question. Um, comedians, it's it said, will talk about anything. So I feel emboldened to ask, what? was your lowest point during that treatment, during those health issues? During those four months? Yeah. Uh, or, or you could do since. I'm, I'm taking any lowest points. At OK. Point. I've had a lot of low points. I would say, I mean, very recently I had um, spinal fusion um, about two and a half months ago. And I uh, had a lot of complications. My intestines shut down. and. All sorts of stuff happened, and I would have to say, I maybe I don't remember because it's been seven years since I had cancer and lost my mother and had C diff and all that. But I feel like possibly my lowest point was maybe a month, month and a half Recently. ago. Yeah, mm. very recent. Um, but I'm coming through all of that now, and. Um, and I'm, I'm very committed to my, my health, my recovery, and um, trying not to sit comfortably when my body reaches a point of feeling OK or better, and just remembering I still hopefully have some time to go, and I, I need to really take care of myself and maintain this. Are you working on your spinal fusion jokes, or is that just too? <laughs> I am. I, I'm working on my next comedy special that might be called either Spineless or um, <laughs> Severed Spine, um, because my spine has not started fusing yet. So that's a whole other story. But um, anyway, yeah, of course, we got, we got a new album coming up um, to mix responses. Responses. <laughs> <laughs> or as I like to say, the crowd goes mild. <laughs> And Robin Roberts told me earlier she stole that line from me uh, about a year ago. So if you hear her say it, she got it from She's, me. We know where it came from. Is there a point where you get tagged the cancer comedian just to speak and, or, and you want to talk about new things? Like, has it been a, a it, it was what made you famous in a way, um, but it also does put you in a lane. And I wonder if, there's, if you ever feel too uh, restricted by that. Well, I know that. I became known when I announced that I had cancer, but I also try to remind myself and other people that I also got known for doing stand-up. I mean, that was what I was doing. And if people see me as a cancer comedian or that's what they think of for me, that has nothing to do with me or how I see myself. Um, it's certainly been a positive in that people have told me that when they saw my special, when I took my shirt off, or when they listened to my special, when I announced that I had cancer, um, that those things touched them. It's, uh, it, it can only be a positive thing to me, but I just don't see myself as a cancer comedian. I mean, people could be like, oh. <laughs> Oh, I saw her as the lesbian comedian. I, I didn't know she had cancer. Or uh, uh, female comedian. You know, you, you can call me whatever you want, but I just, I just, feel, I just feel like a comedian. 
So it doesn't, I don't care what, I don't care what you, I don't, I don't care what you think. <laughs> what, what can people who are well, what is the, what's the, the best thing they can do for people who are like, to, how, how is the, is, it must be annoying all the time people say, how are you, or how do you think I am, I have cancer, you know, so is there something that you learned from your experience about how the well can help those who have been sick? Um, I think uh, what I found helpful for me was to not be overrun with not not that positivity is bad. I'm I'm kind of I, I'm unusually positive and hopeful. But I think that sometimes when you're in these places of despair and pain. Sometimes you need to be able to speak in a, um, I found that I needed to be able to speak in that space of I'm in pain and I am scared and I don't know what to do. And for people to be able to sit in that moment with somebody and accept that and not try and suffocate them with you're going to be okay, and the, the medicine has come so far, and everything, and it's like, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But I really feel this particular way right now, and I just want to share that. And I feel like that was helpful for me when people would allow me to be there. You're now married, I think, or in a long-term relationship, and you have three-and-a-half-year-old twins. Yes, I am it married. Is that like giving your house a deadly disease, having <laughs> three and a half year old twins running around? It's, it's, um, <laughs> yes, actually. Uh, no, it, I, you know, my wife and I, before the, the boys came along, it was maybe a week or two before they were born, and she walked past me, and I was sitting on the couch, and, and I said, uh, or no, she said to me, do you know anything about um, raising kids? <laughs> I said, no, do you? It hadn't come up until now. Um, but um, it, it has been quite a challenge, I'll say that. It's not, I can't pretend like, you know, it's, it's been this perfect ride and, um, perfect family it's like oh my god we have these two people that moved in with us three and a half years ago and uh, they are insane and uh, we are now insane but they just started preschool a couple of weeks ago and so that it's uh, you know there's hope on the horizon Tig Natari thank you so much thank you